um, this is Elizabeth and this is my next video um, for Autism Acceptance Month and this video is about sensory overload and meltdowns, both of them because it's really hard to talk about one without talking about the other. So if you don't know, sensory overload is when an autistic person, there's too much sensory input and it kind of frazzles <laughs> um, and it can be very, very unpleasant. Um, most autistic people, they're either over sensory or under sensory aware um, and sometimes it's a mixture of the both um, so even little things like buzzing lights can contribute to a sensory overload and a meltdown is in a similar thing when there's just too much going on and you break down <laughs> um, and meltdowns can be very bad um, and so I'll go more into that and this also will talk about how to help someone who is going through either one of these. So like I said sensory overload can happen from things that seem really small to a neurotypical person um, like buzzing lights or earlier I felt like I wanted to rip my skin off because my shirt was touching me. And so a lot of autistic people we will have specific like we have to wear certain types of clothes. I can't wear long sleeve shirts except for like jackets and stuff. I have to wear leggings under my pants at all times so my pants don't touch me. Um, and when you don't have those, it can be very hard to cope. And it's not something we can just turn off or ignore. And it often manifests itself in physical pain, even if it seems ridiculous to you. Like that small noise could hurt your head, but it does. Um, and a sensory overload. For me, sensory overload happens a lot more easily when I'm emotionally overwhelmed um, and is more likely to lead to a meltdown because meltdowns can also result from not being listened to, um, in being too overloaded in a social situation. Sorry, the kitty's here again. <laughs> um, and things like that. I'll add more when I can think of them. I'm a bit frazzled right now. Um, but that can make it sensory stimulus can seem a lot more extreme during those times and a lot more likely to lead to a meltdown. And in meltdowns, um, they can manifest in lots of different ways. Um, often crying, um, self-harming stim stimming behaviors, like hitting yourself in the head, um, and things like that. Some autistic people do in meltdowns lash out and hit people around them not realizing what they're doing and things like that. In some situations a meltdown can manifest much like or even coincide with a panic attack. So not being able to breathe, not really being able to take in what's going around on around you, needing feeling like you need to get out of a situation even when that's not realistic or safe um, and things like that and sensory overload can really contribute to that um, if that person is very affected by sensory things because not all autistic people experience things the same way. Um, some autistic people aren't really sensitive to um, sensory things. Um, <laughs> So it can be different, I do want to say that. Um, if someone um, near you is having a meltdown, please do not, well listen to what they want you to do first, if you've talked about this. Do not grab them if they have not told you to like touch them when they're having, because for some people um, it can help to like be restrained and hugged. Um, that can also help them from lashing out at other people, but for some people that can be very, very terrifying, um, especially if it's someone you don't know very well who is trying to help. Um, that is a bad idea. Please don't do that. And like I said, some people will do um, also self-harming sim behaviors. Do not try to forcibly stop them from doing that. That is not going to help, unfortunately. You don't want them to hurt themselves but forcing them to stop that, something that is trying to give themselves relief, 
is not going to work. It's probably going to prolong the meltdown and make it a lot worse for them and for everyone around them. So if you want to help someone in a meltdown, please talk to them beforehand when you're going into a situation that could be potentially causing a meltdown or a sensory overload leading to a meltdown. Um, because everyone has different specifics. Um, some people might just want to be left alone. Um, some people want to be surrounded by their friends, but that is different because a lot of autistic people do not do well in sensory situ in social situations, especially when they're doing having a sensory overload. Um, yes, um, sensory overload leading to meltdowns or just by itself can be prevented most of the time, not most of the time, but often by preventative measures of making sure that you have things that are good sensory things for you, like not wearing clothes that make you uncomfortable, um, cutting out the tags of clothes if that's something that helps, um, having ear defenders, noise canceling headphones in loud situations, um, if you're really affected by light, having sunglasses, um, knowing if you have a place to go where there's not going to be as much sensory stimulus. <clears throat> Um, so like if you're at um, a fair, a carnival, um, that can be a very overwhelming place that can be triggering for sensory overload. So knowing that there's a place like going back to the parking lot where there's not flashing lights and loud music can be really helpful. But you have to have a plan um, because if someone is going into meltdown mode or sensory overload, it can be very hard to think critically about what you need to do. So if this person has talked to you before about what to do and how to help them, please do that. Um, it can be harder though, of course, if you haven't been able to talk to that person about that. Um, in that case, please just listen to them and be there for them. Um, do, not, do not restrain them. Please do not do that. Um, and work work with them um, they are not the enemy they're not doing something wrong on purpose they are freaking out their brain probably feels like it's trying to kill them so please be empathetic even if they're reacting in a way that seems really over the top and possibly dangerous for you please listen to them and understand that they don't want this to happen it is much worse for them than for you um, I hope this video made sense. Um, it got kind of mixed up in my head um, because like I said, I haven't been having a great um, brain day either <laughs> um, or body day. Um, so, but, so I hope that this was coherent enough to where you were able to learn something or learn how to help in that kind of situation if necessary. Um, thank you for watching. And I have a few more videos planned, so I'll see you in a couple days probably. <laughs> Goodbye.